In 1892, Mark Twain wrote, In America, we do not care when a man talks, for we know that the sentiment back of the words will be American. However, that sentiment appears to have changed today. Studies done at North Carolina State and Stanford Universities have shown that people associate a Southern accent with lower education and lower wealth. Surveys indicate that many standard English speakers believe that Southerners speak incorrectly. A University of Chicago study found that children associate specific attributes to accented speakers as early as five years old. Accent neutralization classes and seminars have even been offered in the workplace to help advance careers. This prompts us to ask, how does an accent like one of the variety found in the southern United States affect creation and perception of groups in America? Rogers Brubaker's 2002 work, Ethnicity Without Groups, discusses topics of groupism, reification, and categories, marked and unmarked, as well as groupness as an event. He defines the group as a basic social structure and uses examples like cultural idioms, shared culture through language and activity, to explain how groups become real in our social imagination. While he focuses mainly on ethnicity, his idea of common sense puts the significance of groups into perspective. While they are all socially constructed and some only nominal, they are considered real by those who live inside and outside of them. It is this definition that allows groupness to be seen as an event, something that can change with time, as evidenced by the Twain quote before. The definition of category is also interesting in this context, as it uses culture to explain social dividends. The conversation of groups, insiders and outsiders, also brings to mind Emile Durkheim, whose main sociological question revolved around how individuals interact with each other. The dividend between Standard and Southern English to the point of group creation is influenced by the proliferation and continuation of stereotypes and the portrayal of Southerners with strong accents in the media and popular culture. It's the freedom to do whatever the f we want. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. Daddy, I got me a C minus on my multicultural project. A C minus, huh? Well, let's celebrate. World where men sell propane and propane accessories. Oh, gee. Yeah, I got to be honest with you. Global one. That's what a farce that's turned out to be, huh? Thing is giving me a brain sneeze. A what? A brain sneeze? <laughs> <laughs> It'll give you a brain sneeze. That's what, hey, your brain needs to sneeze, but hey, it can't sneeze because it's the brain. So it just hurts. If I go to a place in the South where at least they are not overtly uh, uh, racist or whatever, I would tend to feel comfortable around Southerners. It makes you come, feel... Come on in here, honey. That kind of... <laughs> In order to further investigate how language in-groups and out-groups operate on campus, I interviewed three students about their opinions of the South. Um, I mean, there's obviously a lot of negative connotations with the South. My personal experience growing up, like, Southern accents, I really associate with, like, mostly, like, older people, like, the nice, like, Southern draw, and it's, like, a lot about hospitality and, like, good food, and, like, that's sort of, like, the lifestyle in which I grew up. So the South has higher rates of like illiteracy and food insecurity and higher rates of poverty, um, but also like a closer sense of community. No, not really. No, definitely not. Um, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but you definitely come into contact with people and, and you have friends who have Southern accents. I wouldn't say it's a majority though. I mean, I think all accents can be funny, but n no, it's <laughs> not that funny. I don't think they're funny, but I think it's like kind of cute. I don't even, maybe, I don't even know. There's so few Southerners that I don't even know if it's enough to qualify as like an out group. Like there's obviously like Texas, but they're like an in group of their own because they're so obsessed with Texas. And like the other Southern states, it's like you don't even run across them. I guess it could be described as an out group, but like I've never felt as part of an out group. No, I don't really think that people like associate with each other based on location. I think it's more like, common interest. I, I'm not sure that they have groupness, but like there's no groupness about northerners or southerners. Yeah, I'm like a friend of mine is this RA and so I went up to him and I was like, oh my god, wait, are you from Alabama? And he's like, yeah, wait, are you? And I was like, yes, like I'm from Alabama. And so we were like, oh my god, like that's awesome. And then I was like, what team are you? Auburn or Alabama? And he's like, I'm an Auburn fan. I was like, me too. And we like chest bumps and it was like, so you get like a sense of community from that. Maybe a little bit more so because we like are in the Northeast, so it's more common, but not necessarily just in anger. All right, sometimes when I tell people where I'm from, they are like, oh, like I always get some sort of weird reaction, like either like, oh my God, like that's so interesting, like 
like I'm like a curiosity or it's like a sort of like a I need to figure out what sort of person you are after you I talk to you for a little bit, you know? My mom, she's from like Oklahoma, so it's like the Midwest kind of. But like growing up she taught me to say crown instead of crayon. And so I had popsicles that were crayons and I called them crowns and then everyone told me I was wrong and I cried. But now like people outside of Georgetown don't because they hear Georgetown and they get it, the fact that I managed to end up here. But um Sometimes here, I feel like they might a little. While interviewing Nina, I thought it would be interesting to relate her language back to her life at home. In D.C., saying I need Coke will get me in trouble with my boss, but saying I need soda in Dallas means jokes that the North has changed. My aunt, it's like she's forgotten that I grew up basically without an accent. So every time I come home, she's like, Nina, where's your accent? Like, well, she doesn't talk like that because she has an accent. <laughs> but um, she's like, you're forgetting your southern roots. Like, you don't care about your heritage. My grandmother's a little bit like that, too. They're like, you're forgetting about your hometown and your accent. Like, you don't like the South. Like, you don't love it here. Like, all this stuff. So, yes. When comparing language to Brubaker's ethnicity without groups, it is significant to note that race and gender play an important role in the perception of language. Furthermore, on Georgetown's campus, there are also many international students that perhaps experience a more pronounced version of groupness. However, this project focused on Southern dialect and accents and tried to provide a glimpse of what it means to be from the South at Georgetown. It appears that the jury is out on whether or not Southerners act totally as an out group. According to the guidelines of Durkheim's religion, they share a culture and a way of speech that reifies their group identity. However, the presence of Southerners who speak with a distinguishable accent on campus remains small enough that perhaps many students do not think consciously about the in-group, out-group distinctions.